Welcome to Plant Society. Uh, this is Unit 1, Introduction to uh, Plants and Society. When we look at plants nowadays, I think we don't notice uh, as much about them since they're all around us. This is a picture of a Titan Arum. Look at it, it looks like a normal flower. Uh, not very colorful. However, when you look at that plant, it's related to a lot of plants in your house, like the philodendron, the Dippenbachia. But it's very strange. When you look at that, that's a flower of the plant, and it's nine feet tall. We're going to discuss all sorts of things about this flower, about this plant, as we go through the different units in plants in society. Plants are pretty amazing living organisms. You look at these, you think, wow, they're here for a year, they grow, or they're in your house, they die right away because you haven't done anything to them. But look at here in the center here is a picture of an aspen tree. This aspen tree is 80,000 years old. Can you imagine where we were 80,000 years ago? A limber pine. You can see these growing on the mountains in the western United States. That's 1,500 years old. So just after Christ, it was, it was starting to grow. The giant redwoods, this is called General Sherman. This is off in California, it's 300 feet tall. And there are more organisms in that giant redwood than, than in many of the places of the tropical rainforest that we all hear about down in South America. We're just discovering that now. We finally have someone going up in these trees, taking pictures, and starting to look at the organisms that actually live up there. Here's a, like, a little quiz so we can look to see what do we know about plants. Uh, the first one, plants providing most of the calories and proteins for human diet. That's true. You know, you think you're a meat eater, but what do those uh, cows eat? They eat corn. They eat uh, soybeans. So we, we feed our animals, even the meat, with plants. The second one, when the Turks conquer, conquered Constantinople, it led to the discovery of the New World. Well, back in those days, uh, in order to spice up our food, we would get spices, of which pepper was the most popular one at the time, and we'd get them from the Silk Road, which came across from Asia, or from the people that were in the area of uh, Jordan or Iran and Iraq now. Well, what happened when the Turks conquered that area? They stopped the trade. So the people wanted to have pepper. They wanted to have these other spices. So what happened was the Spanish sent Christopher Columbus west. They discovered the, the New World. And the Portuguese sent people south where they went around uh, Africa, found the Cape of Good Hope, and then sent their ships over to India and China and brought back the spices that way. Number three, global warming. It's leading to new plants and new diseases. It is because as the weather gets warmer, we find that many of the plants, let's say in Africa, they're used to uh, grow all the time. But now, when you put them up higher, we see some of the plants of North America, for example, growing all the time. And when this happens, they turn over more. We get new mutations and new plants. The incidence of malaria is increasing because as we get global warming, uh, for example, in Nairobi, uh, along the mountains there, Nairobi was established to stop malaria. This is above the mosquitoes range. So now as we have uh, global warming, we find that the mosquitoes now can live longer. They can get up into Nairobi, and so malaria is increasing throughout the world. Number four, new plants through genetic manipulation may save millions from blindness. When we get data about populations, we see that in Asia, there are many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that are dying because of blindness. We can save these people by changing the rice. We have learned now to put vitamin A into the rice. It's called golden rice and we are saving thousands of people from getting blind and thousands of people from dying. Number five, the introduction of the potato to Europe in the 16th century increased the world's population by 25%. When Christopher Columbus brought back the potato uh, on his voyages to the New World, it was first viewed with skepticism. 
uh, the top of the plant looked like a poisonous plant that was in Europe, so people didn't want it. Well, they started planting it, and it turned out it was one of the easiest vegetables to grow. You could put it in rocky soil, which they found in uh, Ireland, and you could just have a small amount of land and grow enough potatoes to keep uh, everyone fed, as well as have some left over to sell. This spread throughout Europe, and now, of course, since we have more food, we have more people. So just in a short 100 years, we increased the world's population by 25%. Number six, 150 acres of forest are cut down for each New York Times Sunday edition. It's true. We use a lot of paper out there. Uh, number seven, 100 trees were used to make one worship. It turns out that maybe because of this fact, uh, this was the start of the Revolutionary War. Just before the Boston Tea Party, there was a rebellion up in Maine because the British were coming in and taking the best lumber, the best trees, to make their warship. Remember, at that time, Britain was the ruler of the world. They were the greatest empire around. They needed the raw materials for their warships. They came over here, took the best lumber, and it started a revolution just before the Boston Tea Party, put down by the British. Number eight, the Salem witchcraft trials in the 1690s might have resulted from a case of fungal poisoning. And this is true. You've heard about uh, all the uh, women and men that were put to death because of the being caused witches or warlocks uh, in Salem. But turns out, probably what happened was that they grew a lot of rye there. The rye got infected with the fungus. The fungus put up in the air some ergot. This ergot got into people's minds and made them a little crazy. Because of this, they thought they were witches and warlocks and uh, burnt them at the stake or did other atrocities to them. Number nine, British sailors were called limeys since they ate limes to cure disease. In our early travels throughout the world, uh, fortunately we discovered sailing. Sailing allowed us to travel along the seas and find new lands, find new plants, find new meadows. But one of the problems was how do uh, people last a long time on the ships? They could use salt and cure the meat. You could take vegetables out there. Didn't last very long. And what happened since they weren't getting vegetables, they were getting vitamin deficiencies. The very popular one at the time was scurvy, which was the lack of vitamin C. People died uh, just on the trip from uh, the New World to the Old World. One of the things that the British did, they discovered that if they had the sailors eat a lime a day, this would stop the uh, scurvy from happening. Of course, they didn't like the taste of limes because they were just a little sour for them, so they mixed them with rum. And so that's they started being called limeys because they had every day their lime and rum. Number 10, people have learned how to use poisonous plants for food and medicine. And this is true, look down in uh, South America, they used curare, which was poisonous. Got that from plants, it paralyzed people, it paralyzed animals, and so they would shoot their animals down there. Because it was a jungle, they didn't want them to travel very far. So the arrow might kill them, but might not. But when they had the poison on them, they died right away. Uh, in South America, we also have cassava, uh, which we see now as tapioca. People learned when they first ate it, they were dying. They got the twitches. Uh, but people learned through trial and error to get that uh, cyanide out of them, and it became one of the most popular foods in South America and now in Africa. We're going to study all these things uh, as we go through the different units. Uh, we'll start off with some of the basics that our flowering plants, which we're going to study most of, are called angiosperms. They supply humanity with the essentials of life. All the vegetables you see out there, the flowers that you see out there, are made by angiosperms. The gymnosperms, which is the other group, are the ones that have the uh, pine trees and have the cones out there. We're going to study a little bit of algae, which are aquatic photosynthetic organisms that show a great diversity of form. We see them now when we have seaweed to eat. 
that giant kale out there. That's what seaweed is. Uh, fungi, they also we're going to study. They have a lot of beneficial items. That's how we got penicillin. Maybe we got bread this way because uh, people took the corn, the wheat, the barley, whatever it was, and left it out. And maybe a fungus got onto it. And what we saw was beer first. In the beer, a lot of them say, well, maybe we can make flour and make bread out of it. A definition of all these living organisms, including us, that they have the capacity to grow and reproduce, the ability to respond, the ability to evolve and adapt, metabolism, and organized structure, and organized composition. All of these plants in us are composed of many elements. The most common ones are carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, potassium, magnesium, magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, and sulfur. Very important because as we look now, just recently we had the Mars rover come back and found these nine elements on Mars. So maybe life existed there. How are plants different from us? Well, number one, they have this ability to use the sun's rays, convert that into energy. We use that via photosynthesis. Do they have roots? Not necessarily. The first plants were just stems. Do they have green leaves? Not necessarily. Do they have cell walls? Not necessarily. When we look out there, we see all these green leafy things with roots. We got all plants, but they don't necessarily have to be a plant. We look at the flower. Here's our uh, common flower out there. The ones that we normally see, it's got a petal on it. It's got a sepal, which protects the whole things. It's got the male and female reproductive organs. We're gonna talk about these again. If we look here, this is a picture of daughter. It's a plant. It's a plant that is very invasive. It can take over soybean fields and corn fields. It doesn't have roots on it. Uh, it doesn't have the chlorophyll on it. What it does, it's like a vampire. It sticks its uh, thorns into a plant, sucks all the energy out of it. Remember, when we talked about this life, we didn't say that they had to move. Plants have learned to move, but in a much different way. They utilize us and animals most likely to do most of the movements. Among the other things we're going to look at briefly, we're going to look at uh, a unit to look at fungi. Uh, I've talked a little about that. Look at that center picture, the picture from space. That is some bacteria called cyanobacteria. It was probably where life started. Uh, we it discovered that it could make oxygen. It discovered that it could make complex amino acids, and probably life came from that. We're going to look at other small life forms, uh, diatoms. We're going to look at seaweeds, uh, such as this rockweed. 